Willys, American Bantam, Ford, and U.S. Army engineers created the Jeep in a collective collaboration for the U.S. Army during the buildup to World War II. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64 the Gear Jammer Skill, and this is Toy Talk. You can probably guess today's topic is the Jeep. And I'm going to start out with a little history on the Jeep, but later on, I've got a story of a bunch of embarrassed Jeep owners. So, smash the like button, and let's get to it. In the 1940s, the World War II Jeep, the most rugged vehicle designed for combat, was designed by three companies and the U.S. Army to U.S. Army specifications. It had to be lightweight, small, sturdy, and versatile, conforming to quarter-ton payload capacity. This was a tall order to deliver on, but Willys and Ford were able to come up with a standardized design, and they were able to build a combined 647,925 units from 1941 to 1945. Talk about an astounding feat at that time. After the war ended, Willys continued to manufacture the Jeep primarily for the military, but there was growing civilian demand as well for the rugged machine. The public was clamoring for their own Jeep to use, and Willys met the demand with the first civilian Jeep, the CJ-2A, in July of 1945. I'm going to leave the evolution of the Jeep to a later date and another video on a review of the Willys MB model that I have. So be sure to go on and subscribe so you don't miss it. Fast forward a few decades to the subject at hand, the Jeep CJ-7 Laredo. The Laredo package was offered in the CJ line from 1980 to 1986, but because the CJ-5 was discontinued after 1983, it was pretty rare in the line. The typical package included a chrome grille, bumpers, wheels, hood emblem, and trim. The Laredo package also included high back leather seats and a tilting steering wheel. Since 1986, the Laredo name has carried on in several Jeep brand models until the current day and has come to represent an upper middle trim package with stylish accents. The Jeep CJ7 Laredo was equipped with the Quadratrack 1 4x4 system, while the Jeep CJ7 Limited utilized the Quadratrack 2 4x4 system with select terrain traction management system, and hill descent control. The Quadratrack 1 4x4 system continuously drives power to all four wheels, but the power is evenly distributed at all times. What is Quadratrack four-wheel drive system? The Quadratrack SRT 4x4 system includes a large mechanical wet clutch as well as rear electronic limited slip differential. This allows up to 100% of drive torque to be transferred to the rear wheel. Additional features included single speed transfer case and brake lock differential. Now we are getting way too technical, but all that fancy tech back then made the Jeep CJ7 a really capable and fun four-wheel drive vehicle to own and take off-roading. Let's head on over to the rock quarry and talk about model car groups 118th scale die cast representation of the famous CJ7 Laredo. This is the model car group 1980 Jeep CJ7 Laredo package. It is a 118th scale die cast model it is a sealed body, it doesn't have any opening parts on it, but it does have the open top. Now, it didn't come with a regular top, so you couldn't really close this thing up, but it looks really cool and 
what was the point of a Jeep with the top on? I mean, they were meant to have the tops off, especially the old classic CJs. It's in black, which was a classic Laredo package. Black, it's got the chrome wheels, the chrome mirrors, chrome grill, and chrome bumpers. Really sharp Laredo. It has also has the black high back leather seats inside, if you can see that. It has a steering wheel on the steering column with the tilt lever and the turn signal lever on it. It says AMC on the horn badge. The spokes are painted silver with the black rim for the leather wrapped on the steering wheel. On the floor, it has the, for the emergency brake pedal, it has the clutch pedal, the brake pedal for the regular brakes, and the throttle pedal for accelerating. It also has a gear shift and the 4x4 transfer case gear shift on the floor. On to the back, it has a California license plate. It has the Jeep style, individual jewel style brake lights with the clear portion for the backup lights, fuel filler cap, and it has the spare tire mounted on a carrier back here. Now the carrier doesn't pivot so you can open the tailgate, but it is mounted right there. And then the tailgate's behind it with all the Jeep and everything on it, but you can't see it because of the spare tire and the carrier. Rides on, as you can tell, Goodyear Tracker AT tires, big, heavy, uh, lug off-road tires. Really, really good tires. Passenger side, you can see the Jeep logo, the Laredo written on the hood, red rear marker light, amber front marker light, black fender flares, chrome wheels that have Jeep on the center cap, and the white letter tires. You can see the Jeep plus the little extra graphic package underneath. On the dashboard, it has gauges that you can actually read. Speedometer, you know, temp, pressure. It has the little radio and all your little levers for heat and air. It has the dash pad and it has a rear view mirror up there and then the little visors that you can fold down. Back seat also has a nice tuck and roll on it and then the roll bar really really sharp front windshield probably the one thing that i don't like about it is it has photo wedge windshield wipers never been a fan of them they're too easy to knock off but in this bigger scale they're much harder to knock off it has a hard abs plastic clear front windshield though and then look at that chrome grill chrome front bumper with a california plate on it it has Jeep written on the piece that goes out to the bumper, chrome grill. The rings around the headlights are chrome as well, and then it has individual jewel style headlights and fog lights. Really, really nice job they did on this Jeep. Up top, it has the molding in of the hinges and the windshield latches that the windshield would rest down when it folds down. You can see the chrome mirrors there, and you can also see the molded in grill for the cowl up there on the hood sides they just tampoed well no eight they molded the hood latches and then they tampoed them silver did a really sharp job on this body overall underneath not a whole lot of detail spring suspension roughly just made uh differentials in the axles and sort of it looks like the drive shafts now they didn't completely fill it out because is mounted on a display base inside inside a window box so they couldn't really put all of that in there it is still a really nice piece you can see the discs for the uh, rotors for the brakes and then there's also the exhaust that comes out and goes out in front of the rear tire on the passenger side still while it isn't the opening parts and everything else this is still a great model and would be a great addition to your collection because they were limited and hard to find when they came out and they're even harder to find today now many of you may have recognized this it's been in a couple other videos i've even driven this jeep in two different videos one on a cat or dump truck and one on the suburban towing truck so go see those videos with the link down below this is the model car group 1980 Jeep CJ7 Laredo package in black with chrome accents. 118th scale die cast Jeep model. Really sharp.
compared to today, the CJ7 is very low tech. But I'll put that low tech up against a modern Wrangler and go anywhere the modern Jeep can. And the CJ7 will have the added benefit of being a heck of a lot easier to work on when something breaks. Which we all know in off-roading is a matter of when, not if. <laughs> I will give the modern Jeep Wranglers have a better ride quality and overall better road manners than the old CJs. But off-road is where the CJs shine. Take for example a story told to me by my dad about one of his trips out to the desert in California. My dad told me about a column of civilian jeeps numbering from 50 to 75. They were seen driving in the Cyril's dry lake bed, a dry lake in the Mojave Desert of California. The jeeps entered from the extreme southern end of this long narrow lake bed. When they were spotted by my dad's group, they were covered with dirt and dust, but apparently had had a great drive. The funny part of the story was at the Trona Pinnacles. These are huge tufa domes that were built up by the natural depositing of calcium as the lake dried up. Well, at the Pinnacles was a college group that had driven to the Pinnacles by another shorter route. This was the group that my dad was a part of. Their vehicles consisted of a Bluebird school bus, two Ford station wagons, a Chevy Suburban truck and a 14-foot box van rental truck. Of course, getting a Bluebird school bus with 40 college students to the Pinnacles was a challenge. There was no road like there is today. The bus driver had to make his own road, as did the box van, station wagons, and Suburban. The bus driver picked what he thought was a good route. However, he ended up on a gravel bar with no turnaround option. The gravel bar was about 150 feet in elevation above the bottom of the lake bed where the pinnacles were. What to do? Not able to turn around and no clear way to back up. The only option was forward down a 45 degree slope that was about 300 to 500 feet long. So the driver unloaded the students, started forward, began sliding, locked the air brakes, and slid all the way down. Meanwhile, the Jeep convoy came to a dusty stop at the base of the Trona Pinnacles. After their very arduous journey that they were certain only tough four-wheel drive vehicles could make. <laughs> Imagine their surprise to see a college group there with normal highway vehicles. Everybody thought it was amusing and had a good laugh. A school bus, a box van, and regular station wagons sitting where the Jeep convoy thought only their tough off-road 4x4s could get. Each group took a separate route and ended up at the same place. After the good laugh, each group went their separate ways. I know my dad was talking about it decades later, so I'll bet those guys in the Jeep convoy did the same. Anyway, if you want to learn more about how to add value to your collection, like finding and adding one of these older released Jeep CJ7 Laredos, Grab my free report with the link down below. Thanks for watching. Please go on and smash the like button to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe and ring the bell for more great diecast product reviews and go on and share this video. Also, don't forget to go on over to my Patreon page and sponsor me there. There's a link down below. It will really help keep this channel going. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another video.